In this video, we're going to learn about the Factor Theorem. As usual, there are some exam questions in the video's description that you can try afterwards. Let's start with a quadratic equation. In order to solve this, most people would probably factorise. You can factorise the left-hand side as x plus 10, x minus 2. These two brackets here are known as factors. They're factors since they multiply to give you the quadratic. If we then said we'll look at this first bracket, x plus 10, if that's going to equal 0, then we get the solution x equals negative 10, and the second bracket, x minus 2 equals 0, that will give us x equals 2. These are both known as solutions. The reason they're solutions is if you substitute either of them back into the original quadratic here, you will get 0. Let's just verify that that's true. So if we substitute negative 10 in, we do negative 10 squared, plus 8 lots of negative 10, take 20. Negative 10 squared is 100, 8 times negative 10 is negative 80, and then take away 20. And this does indeed give 0. And what about 2? So if we substitute 2 in, 2 squared, plus 8 lots of 2, take 20. 2 squared is 4, 8 lots of 2 is 16, and then take 20. And again, this does give 0. So the reason they're solutions is because if you substitute them in, they do give you 0. Now the factor theorem is concerned with the link between the solutions and the factors. If you look at this solution here, x equals negative 10, that corresponds to a factor of x plus 10. And if you see this solution here, x equals 2, this corresponds to a factor of x minus 2. So if you know the solutions, you can also find the factors just by doing x and then doing the opposite sign of the solution. So when it's positive, you do negative, and when it's negative, you do positive. Let's have a look at this with an example. Now let's look at this cubic expression here. I'm going to substitute in some numbers. If I substitute in a number and I get 0 as the result, then I know I found a factor. I'm going to start with the number 1. So 1 cubed plus 4 lots of 1 squared plus 1 takes 6. 1 cubed is just 1. 4 lots of 1 squared, well 1 squared is 1, and times 4, that gives 4, and then we've got plus 1 takes 6. 1 add 4 add 1 is 6, so 6 takes 6 does give you 0. Now I substituted in here a positive 1. This means that my factor will be x take away 1. So x take away 1 is a factor. Let's try a different number. This time we'll do negative 4. So negative 4 cubed, plus 4 lots of negative 4 squared, plus negative 4 take 6. Negative 4 cubed is negative 64. Then we've got 4 lots of negative 4 squared. Well, negative 4 squared is positive 16, and 4 lots of 16 is 64, so plus 64. Then we've got take 4, take 6. And if you simplify this, well, the 64s there will cancel out, so it's negative 4, take 6, which is negative 10. Now, this doesn't come out as 0. So since we substituted in negative 4 here, then the bracket we were considering was actually x plus 4. But since this doesn't give 0, it gives negative 10, then unfortunately this is not a factor. So the factor theorem states that if f of x is a polynomial, and f of a equals 0, so a was the number we were substituting in, then x minus a is a factor of f of x. Let's have a look at how questions can be written in exams. Show that x plus 5 is a factor of this. So the factor in this question is x plus 5. This means that if we do the opposite sign, so negative 5, and substitute that in, we need to get 0. So if we do f of negative 5, this will be 2 lots of negative 5 cubed, plus 15 lots of negative 5 squared, plus 27 lots of negative 5, plus 10. Now because this is a show that question, you really need to show all of the steps. You can't just type this into your calculator and write equals 0. So negative 5 cubed is negative 125, and 2 lots of that is negative 250. Negative 5 squared is 25, and 15 lots of 25 will give you plus 375. 27 lots of negative 5 is take 135, and then plus 10. Now at this point, you can show that that does indeed equal 0. So we've managed to show that f of negative 5 does give you 0, so x plus 5 is a factor. The factor theorem can be especially useful when you're trying to factorise polynomials. Let's imagine we had to factorise this cubic here. 
We know now that if we substitute in a number and we get zero out, then we found one of the factors. The only question is which number do you choose to substitute? Well, in your exam, you'll probably be given one of the factors. If you aren't though, then you want to look at the last term here. Look at the factors of 30. So one, two, three, five, six, 10, 15, and 30, and also the negatives of those. These would be the numbers to try. Now there's an awful lot of numbers here, obviously. So I'm going to choose one that I know is a factor. I'm going to do f of three. f of three is three cubed, plus four lots of three squared. Take 11 lots of three and take 30. Three cubed is 27. Three squared is nine and times that by four is 36. Negative 11 times three is negative 33 and then take 30. And this does give you zero. So we substituted in positive three, in which case x take three is a factor. Now we could continue this method to try and find the other factors just by guessing numbers, or there is a quicker way. Now that we have one of the factors, x take away 3, we could divide this into the original polynomial and see what we get, using polynomial long division. So let's do that now. So we'll do a bus stop, put the cubic inside, and the linear factor we've just found outside. We'll do x cubed divided by x, which gets you x squared, multiply that back through, x squared times x is x cubed, x squared times negative 3, negative 3x squared. Then subtract these, x cubed take x cubed is 0, 4x squared take away negative 3x squared is 7x squared. Then bring down the next term. Do 7x squared divide by x, which is plus 7x, then multiply that plus 7x back through. 7x times x is 7x squared, 7x times negative 3, negative 21x, then we subtract. The 7x squareds will cancel. Negative 11x take away negative 21x is 10x. Then bring down the final term. Do 10x divide by x, which is plus 10. And then multiply that plus 10 back through. So 10 times x, 10x. And 10 times negative 3, negative 30. And if you subtract these, you get 0. So if you divide this cubic by this linear term here, you end up with this quadratic term. That means that this cubic is equal to the product of the linear term and the quadratic term. So we're nearly there. We've managed to factorize this into a linear term and a quadratic term. But this quadratic term also factorizes itself. So this is equal to the linear term. And if you factorize this quadratic term, you'll get x plus 2 and x plus 5. So we've now managed to fully factorize the cubic using the factor theorem first and then polynomial long division. You could also be asked to solve cubic equations. So if we were asked to solve this cubic equation, notice it's the same as the last one, but it's now an equation because it has equal zero, we would factorize it like we just did. And then we would find our solutions. So from the x minus three bracket, we get the solution x equals three. The x plus two bracket gives x equals negative two and the x plus 5 bracket gives x equals negative 5. Now there's one more type of question you need to be aware of. Imagine we were asked to show that this bracket, 2x plus 1, was a factor of this cubic. Now if you look at this factor here, you'd probably say, well, we've got plus 1, so we'll do the opposite sign, negative 1, and if we substitute in negative 1, we'll get 0. So you'd do f of negative 1, which is 2 lots of negative 1 cubed, plus 11 lots of negative 1 squared, plus 17 lots of negative one plus six. Two lots of negative one cubed is negative two. 11 lots of negative one squared is just 11. And 17 lots of negative one is negative 17 and then plus six. Now, if you do this, you end up with negative two, not zero like you expected, but two X plus one is actually a factor of this cubic. So something else is going on. The difference here is this number two. This wasn't there for any of the other factors. So the number we substitute in isn't actually negative one. What you want to do is take this bracket, two x plus one, and set it equal to zero. If we take one from both sides, we get two x equals negative one, and then divide both sides by two, we get x equals negative a half. So this would be the solution if this were an equation, in which case negative a half is what we actually need to substitute in. So if you do f of negative a half, you do two lots of negative a half cubed, plus 11 lots of negative half squared, plus 17 lots of negative one half, plus six. 
If we do negative a half cubed, we get negative one eighth, so two lots of negative an eighth. Negative a half squared is a positive quarter, so it's plus 11 quarters, plus 17 lots of negative a half plus six. Now if we do two lots of negative an eighth, we end up with negative two over eight, which simplifies to negative a quarter. Now we'll do 11 quarters. Then we've got 17 times negative a half, which is negative 17 over two, and then plus six. Now to make this easy, we'll write all of these over four. So for the final two terms, we've got negative 17 over two, which is the same as negative 34 over four. And this positive six is the same as plus 24 over four. And if you do negative one, add 11, take 34 plus 24, you do indeed get zero. So now we've shown that f of negative a half equals zero, so the bracket 2x plus 1 is a factor. This means we need to slightly modify our factor theorem. So if f of x is a polynomial and f of b over a equals 0, then ax minus b is a factor of f of x. So for example, if we had f of 1 third, here b is 1 and a is 3. So if we substitute that into the factor bit, we get 3x minus 1 is a factor. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the exam questions that are down in the video's description, what video I think you should watch next and also subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.